Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we will be looking at photosynthesis. We will define the term photosynthesis. Then we will look at the two stages of this process. We will discuss the fate of the products of photosynthesis, limiting factor, and the adaptations of leaves to allow photosynthesis to occur. What does the term photosynthesis mean? The term is actually derived from two words, photo, which means light, and synthesis which means to combine two or more things together. So basically, in photosynthesis, we are combining things together with the use of light energy. However, a better definition of photosynthesis is that it is the process of converting light energy into chemical energy. How does this process occur? For photosynthesis to occur, we need chlorophyll. This is present in the chloroplasts of autotrophs, such as plants and algae. The chlorophyll will trap the light energy. It then uses that energy to react carbon dioxide with water to make sugars. Below we have a balance equation that is summarizing this process. However, this process is not as simple as it may seem. We will examine this in more details after the next slide. On this slide, there is a summary of the reactants and products of photosynthesis. At the bottom, we have the conditions that must be present in order for the process to occur. Now we will look at the two stages that are involved in photosynthesis. The first of these two stages is called light dependent stage or light stage. In this stage, light energy from the sun is used to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. This is called photolysis. Photo means light, while the word lysis means to break apart. So we are basically using light energy to break apart the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. When these bonds are broken, energy is released. The energy is temporarily stored on a molecule called ATP, and it will be used in the next stage of this process. At the bottom, we have a summary of this process taking place we can see that the water molecule is split into hydrogen and oxygen. The next stage does not require light energy and it is therefore called light independent stage or dark reaction. In this stage, hydrogen that was made in the light stage, that is from the splitting of the water molecules, will combine with the carbon dioxide in a reduction reaction to form sugars. Glucose is the main sugar that is made during this reaction. At the bottom, we have an equation to represent this reaction. So let us now summarize what happens during photosynthesis. At the beginning, chlorophyll will absorb the light energy. This energy will then cause water molecules to split into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen will be given off at this point. Some energy is also given off. In the final stage, carbon dioxide will combine with hydrogen to form sugars. Let us now briefly look at what will happen to the products that are made during photosynthesis. Glucose and oxygen are the two main products that will be made during photosynthesis. The glucose can be used in several ways. For example, it can be used for aerobic respiration by the plant. It could also be converted into starch. However, it can also be converted into sucrose. The sucrose can then be translocated in the phloem tubes. Translocated simply means it will move from one part of the plant to another part of the plant. For example, it might move from where it is manufactured, and that is the leaf, which we can also refer to as a source, and it will move towards another part of the plant where it can be stored as starch. And that location where it is stored, we can call that as a sink. So the source is where it is manufactured and the sink is where it is stored. Furthermore, the glucose can be used in the manufacture of lipids and proteins in the plants. The oxygen made during photosynthesis can be used by the plant for aerobic respiration, while the excess oxygen will be given off to the stomata of the leaves. Next, we will look at the limiting factors of photosynthesis. These are factors that can increase or decrease the rate at which the process occurs. The first factor that we have is light intensity. If you look at the graph, you would notice that as light intensity on the x-axis increases, the rate of photosynthesis will also increase around point A. 
However, at point B, it shows that it is the maximum rate that photosynthesis can occur. So even if we were to add more intense light to the plant, the rate will remain at that maximum level. The process of photosynthesis is actually controlled by enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that functions within a narrow temperature range. Therefore, as this graph is showing, if the temperature is low at point A, then the rate of photosynthesis will also be very slow because the enzymes will not be functioning properly. At the other extreme, at point B, the temperature is very high. Therefore, the enzymes will not function and photosynthesis will be very low or it will stop. The final two limiting factors that I wish to mention are carbon dioxide and water availability. In most cases, it is water that may be in short supply within the ecosystem. This graph is similar to the one that we saw before with light intensity. The same explanation applies here. If you were to increase the carbon dioxide concentration, or it could be the amount of water that is available to the plants, the rate of photosynthesis will increase until the plant reaches its maximum rate. The main organ that is involved in photosynthesis is the leaf. However, young stems may also undergo photosynthesis. We will now look at some adaptations of leaves that allow them to undergo photosynthesis. The first adaptation is that they have broad flat leaves with large surface area. This helps leaves to be exposed to as much sunlight and air as possible. Leaves are also usually very thin. There are two advantages to this. One, it allows for a rapid diffusion of gases and two, it allows sunlight to penetrate all of the cells. The xylem vessels and the phloem tubes are very close to the photosynthesizing cells in the mesophyll layer that you would see very shortly. The xylem supplies water to the chloroplast while the phloem will remove organic products made during photosynthesis. The final adaptation that I wish to mention is that leaves normally have numerous stomata at the bottom or at the lower epidermis. This is to allow quick diffusion of gases into and out of the leaves. You should be able to draw and label the external parts of a given leaf as shown in this image. It is also important that you learn to label the internal structures of the leaf. This is an internal view or a transverse section through a leaf. The palisade mesophyll layer contains a lot of chloroplasts. It is where most of the photosynthesis occurs. The spongy mesophyll layer contains cells that are a bit far from each other. These are air spaces and they allow gases to move freely. So while examining a plant or any other organism, we observe that their structures are usually adapted in a manner that allows them to carry out their functions effectively. This brings us to the end of this lecture. Please remember to check the resource section for more information related to this topic. If you have any questions or comments, please use the discussion section. Thank you once again.